Um, we had a lot of that uh, comes from Liam Lashley, all about Liam Lashley, that he didn't play. Uh, we'd be expecting to prove a point this year, that we are still the number one team in the country, with Liam McHale playing against us. A tight game? Definitely so, yeah. very tight, down to the last minute. We really want to win this game very bad, badly. Um, we've never won a national title before, we're going to give it everything that we have. The boys are really psyched up, but we want to be further, to show everybody in the country that we are the top team. Of course, you've already beaten them in the league. You beat them in Valinna. Yeah, in the league, we beat them by five, I think. But this is going to be different. This is the ISS Cup final. Like, um, and we want to win. Padraos, chairman of the club. Big day for Valinna. Yes, Gerald. This is our day. We waited 16 years for this day, and hopefully, we will come through in the end and bring the cup home to the West. Of course, you're hoping to atone for last year, but you didn't have Liam McHale that day. Yes, Liam, unfortunately, was injured last year, but this year we're at full strength. The squad are looking well. Terry has them in good shape, and uh, let's go. Hope it this time. It's the final, I suppose, that everybody. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Neptune Stadium for the final of the ICS Cup 91 between the home team on the scoreboard, Bergeland Neptune, and from the west, Connacht Gold Ballina. We'll start by introducing the Corkman, captaining the side number 12, Seamus Woods. Number four, Stephen McCarthy. Number five, welcome return for Brendan O'Flaherty. Number seven, Gordon Fitzgerald. Number eight, Tom Wilkinson. Number nine, Paul Kelly. Number 10, Colin O'Sullivan. Number 11, Tom O'Sullivan. Number 14, Ian McLean. And from the USA, wearing number six, Sam Graham. And the Bergala Neptune coach is Jim Nugent. And let's now have a big welcome for the men from the West, Conneth Gold Ballina. <laughs> Captaining the side, number 14, Anthony McHale. Number four, DJ Naylor. Number five, Paul McStay. Number six, Brian Collins. Number 54, Gary Kelly. And the Connacht Gold Ballina coach is Terry Kennedy. Well, there's some noise you'll gather. It really is a noisy afternoon. What about the
that ovation that Ballina got. Are there that many male supporters here in the Neptune Stadium, I wonder? We're joined by Tim McCarthy once again, Tim. We have to talk about the, the deafening noise in here. Terrific atmosphere. Tremendous atmosphere, Joe. One of the best we've really seen in the cup situation. I think that the noise is deafening, and it's going to take a few minutes for the players to adjust to this noise, because this is tremendous. This is what basketball is all about, you know? And this is it. This is the big one. What about the matchup this afternoon? We heard the Ballina fans cheering for Diora. Who do you expect will be on Diora? I think Tom Sullivan will probably start on Diora. I think that Jim will have Sam Gray and Marky Bryan Collins inside and taking a gamble on Diora on the outside. However, the critical matchup will be who's taking Liam McHale. And I think Jim will start with Seamus Woods. And that's going to be a very important matchup at the start of the game. Now, Ballina are a strong team. They're a fairly physical team, a physical type of game they play. And the referees this afternoon will have a very important function to play. We're very lucky. The referees are two very good referees. But Ballina are a big team, and I think their biggest problem will be fouling. If they can stay out of foul trouble, they'll have a great chance of taking the competition. However, they tend to, to lose discipline, and if they get into foul trouble, then it's going to be hard for them to maintain their, their standards throughout the game. The incentive is enormous, of course. We were asking the question on Friday night, were Neptune slipping? I think we got our answer. But today, it's different opposition altogether. It's a very hard game to call. Ballina and Neptune, the first five are very evenly balanced. However, down the bench, Neptune seems to be stronger. But I'm expecting a very close game, an excellent game of basketball, and I won't make my decision at this point in time, Joe. You'd like to be out there? Well, I'd love to be out there, but those days are gone, you know? Maybe some other time. So finally, a prediction. Who's going to win it? If I'm pushed, I go for Neptune. I think that they have more balance down the floor, and it's a home court. They've been used to it. Neptune by three. And we were talking, of course, about the best players in the country, Liam McHale, in there against Tom O'Sullivan. That's going to be quite a duel. Yeah, they're the two best Irish players, and then you have Dior as the best American. But this is the platform Liam McHale has waited for for four or five years, and I hope he does himself justice today. He has been Ireland's top player, and I think this is the platform to show today. Well, we're looking forward to getting to your considered views again at halftime in the match. We'll let you go sit down and enjoy it now. The atmosphere, as we say, is quite unbelievable. Mexican waves, everything. Great crowds, great excitement. We just hope that the match lives up to expectation. So let's take a check now on the starting fives from both teams. We'll join Liam Hartigan. Well, for Neptune, the starting five is led by Seamus Woods, the captain. Also Stephen McCarthy, Sam Graham, the American, Paul Kelly, and Tom O'Sullivan, the world Then we can take a look at the Ballina team. They're led out by the captain, Anthony McHale, also Liam McHale, Paul McStay, Brian Collins, and Fiora Marsh. And I think we can have a word now from Sean O'Sullivan at courtside. The place is jumping and the battle is going to warm up. I'm joined here on the court side by Joe Mara, one of the best coaches in juvenile basketball for Neptune Stadium. Joe, how's it going to go? I tell you, it's not going to be a battle. It's not just a battle anymore. This is all a war. With Tom O'Sullivan and Paul Kelly on the outside tonight, this is going to make everything look like in the round of rack very small. Kelly, Sullivan's firing the Scots missiles. They haven't got a chance to hold anything inside against us. We proved this in 1982. We're the best club in the country. And it's about time. This came to the fore, and we got everything sorted up for once and for all to prove that Neptune and the Borg and Sierra team are the best team in Ireland. And if given a chance, we'll also be one of the best we they have in Europe. Fighting talk there from Joe Mara, Pedro Flynn from the Ballina team. What's your opinion about that? He said he was in the Lebanon for a good while. He missed everything. The last four years, half are the best team. Can't afford now. There's no team like him. I feel sorry for Sam Graham because he's going down the tubes with the Oramars. I never saw a team so sides up. We're staying in Cove this morning. That bit of the railway station. That's how bad they are. They're just right, Sam. This is serious. The war in the Gulf means nothing. This is the war. It's today that we'll find out the best Irish player in the league. Who is he? Lee McHale. Back to Jar. Let the battle commence. When I was just listening to Sean there, it just reminded me, uh, when you're down there, you're having to raise your voice so much just to try and hear yourself and be heard. But the microphones are so sensitive, so we do apologise. It's the decibel level in here. It's gone up several notches. 
So Terry Kennedy then with his last few words of advice for his charges. And Brian Mullins, a great Leicester basketball fan, a little disappointed, I suppose, with the performance yesterday and the results, certainly. And several other people in there. Megan Maguire, I think that is there in the centre, who uh, should have been playing in the Wildcats team, but out through injury. And some of the VIPs just out in the front there. You see Amy Doherty there, former guard of commissioner. Starting five for Burgoyne, Wallace. And many of the other executives from uh, the ICS building society, Tony O'Connell. So, discipline, box out, let's go. One, two, three, go! And here on the court side here, a very important team of people, the team officials. We have uh, the Commissioner of Saint Thomas Raleigh in the middle there, uh, with Marie Conroy being the scorer, and John Collins doing the clock. Kevin Harris is the 30 second clock. Every second vital in basketball, as we know. So, is it to be a fourth cup win for Neptune? Will they hang on to their trophies? They won in an exciting fashion last year. Will Malana have a 20-point lapse last year? They were minus inspirational figure. It's Tony Colgan then who gets the 1991 ICS Cup final underway and straight away to the main position. Fouls, of course, terribly important in basketball. The bench that Sean was talking about just a moment ago, keeping tabs on all of these as Diora moves to the game. Yeah. It's interesting to note the matchup there. Tom O'Sullivan marking Diora Marsh, the biggest player on the opposition. Well, he has marked him before, and uh, Jim Newton was just saying to me beforehand, he has a number of options here. He can afford to vary it quite a bit. Paul Kelly. Stephen McCarthy, MVP in last year's Cup Final against Ballina. Paul Kelly taking that one inside, looking for the first score for Neptune in this game. Foul is called against Stephen McHale. McHale quite curious himself. So the two number 11s, the two star players we've been talking about, have both a foul on the public. Sam Graham spills out the full next day. I think they're holding on to it. And an interesting tactical decision here by Ballina coach Terry Kennedy. They're playing a triangle in two. They're really afraid of the three-point shooting of Paul Kelly and Tom O'Sullivan. So both of the McHale brothers are marking down. Look at the analysis of here. A brilliant start for the great start. I should show everyone, including the Ballina fans here, that he is the, the number one Irish-born player in the country. As Ballina have stretched out a four-point lead already, and as he was fouled when he was putting that basket, he picks up the bonus so he can make that three-point play. So a useful start then being made by Ballina. Ballina, who beat Neptune in Killala. In fact, they were 49-29 up at half time in that game. Dior Marsh. Woods, the player who was a real doubt before this game, he had a consultation oh, with his doctor again this morning to make sure that he was okay and fit to play. As well as the player shows his skills in the combination with a lovely basket, put inside Boo, but in a fine shot. Look at him for he's ready to confront Stephen McCarthy. Two great talents on the point. Again, Shane Woods checked away this time and committed the foul. That's Brian Collins, six foot seven inch. Terry Kennedy on the speed straight away there. He doesn't regard that as being a foul. He thought it was a legitimate block by Brian Collins. There you are, Seamus Woods at the line for two. A certain amount of justification, I think, as well. Brian Collins certainly was very angry with the call. And because of the defense on the two three-point shooters, <laughs> Pressure is coming on Seamus Woods to take that ball to the hoop. Well, one or two 
Kennedy comes to the side demanding a timeout. He's not happy with the last couple of days of play. He'll make some changes. Outside the ball, McStay. Ball and now the leaders. McStay back to Anthony McHale. In Division 1, having lost just one match in the league campaign so far, that's the very first one against Marathon from Limerick. Inside to Lee McHale. Anthony McHale. And he really has started in very convincing fashion. He's on five points for the match. Terry Kennedy wanting that timeout. Ball and now the leaders. Bergen and Neptune, Stephen Sonny, 16 minutes and 40 seconds to go, first half. half. Shooting from around 25 feet out. Pick up the Oramarsh. And when Fioramarsh matched up against Sam Graham earlier in the year, setting and up the point for Sam Graham is playing for St. Vincent's Dublin, I definitely think Fioramarsh had better of the matchup. Here's Max Day. Hale wanting that ball in his hands. Show what he can do. And a big setting. The Oromars has that ball taken away by Paul Kelly. He's actually not with him at this stage. Meanwhile, it's showing his works. He's not the title once again. To make it eight points to nine. Shares on six points. So one point between the sides. Four minutes and a half. Basically, Terry Kennedy just cancelled his time out. He should have got one he said after that last score, but he's just left it fall. Ryan Collins takes the base. Collins back with the Palama team this year, having missed last year's campaign when he was abroad. So Stephen McCarthy. Confidently going for it himself. Rebound to James Woods. Not to win Ryan Collins. For Stephen McCarthy again. And that'll be a jump ball between Stephen McCarthy and Stephen McCarthy. Keep your eye on some very interesting off-the-ball battles. Tom O'Sullivan and Diora Marsh are having it hot and heavy, but also on the point guard, Stephen McCarthy and Paul Max, they are exchanging nudges. This could be a hot battle yet. Very even match so far. Rebound, Paul Good defensive rebound. And Paul Max Day, having a little look around him there, no particular hurry. Paul Max Day is standing up. Neil Gaelic footballer as well, of course. Along Marsh. Marsh with the shot. 
That spills out towards Stephen McCarthy. Thomas Sullivan jumping, shooting for three, and it's going to be a foul. The foul is called on by Sam Graham. Hold on Sam Graham then, who picks up his first personal foul. And they're on their feet down here, Jackie Solon with a grimace. He's just disappointed with that foul on Sam Graham. It was a foul, he came in over the top. Three teams are in charge of this uh, left hand side last year. 18 matches played, 18 matches won in the league, and they also won the competition. Who extends Ballinar's lead by three points to the delight of these fans who've come down from Ballinar for this game and indeed from many other parts in County Mayo. So Mayo against Cork. Seamus Woods, a Limerick man, formerly of St. Gold's. The foul is picked up by Brian Wallace. Foul number six, Colin Collins, that's a second foul, 14 fouls. So it's going to be possession from the side of the court for Neptune in this 1991 CS Cup final coming to you live this afternoon from Cork. The war drum hammering out its message in the background. James Rose comes down the middle of the basket, rebounded to Leora Marsh, and Paul McStay can start it all again. Stephen McCarthy plays the ball, it's going to be a red ball, and the official agrees with him. There was scarcely a piece of space to be found in the stadium, every seat taken up by people who wanted to get here for the cup final. Yes. Back to the basketball here, and Seamus Rose, who is such a tireless worker for this game. Five days in hospital in the last two weeks because of the foul boys being picked up here when he burned his arm when he was playing here against North Farm two weeks ago. Uh, the arm festered and he ended up and was rather weak and a real doubt for this weekend. And one of the interested spectators is young Deira Marsh's son and his wife Gay in the stands. Major excitement there for the uh, young kid. Well, they're all enjoying the song, and they're so good to get the by three points. And I'd expect to see a change by Neptune soon. I don't think Tom O'Sullivan can guard the Aura Marsh. I expect uh, Sam Gray maybe to take him. Lee McHale, working the McHale. That's his seventh point of the match. Three field goals, and uh, he got a bonus from the free throw line as well, you may remember. Stephen McCarthy. Paul Kelly getting more and more court time in the last season or so and he certainly used it well by talented player a lot of those shots are not just going down for Neptune by comparison Balana seems to have a much richer striking vein at this stage the change you predicted to the end is going to happen because Colin O'Sullivan is going to get ready for, for the fray he's coming in for more behind that for Neptune and I'm sure that he's going to take a big defensive role probably in the future Following that series of misses which we've seen, the referee Johnny Colgan was perfectly positioned to say that there was no foul by Diora Marsh. Diora positioned then in the centre against Sam Graham, the two Americans, one American per team permitted nowadays. Graham goes in, and Diora Marsh looks at Johnny Colgan and says, Surely there was an offensive foul, I'd established position, but the referee wasn't interested. Jim Nugent whistling out the instructions. 70 40. Diora Marsh trying to stretch that now to a six point lead with a three point shot. That ball there, Anthony McHale. That was a tough game yesterday. Timeout, can't call Ballina with 11 minutes and 25 seconds to go. The timeout has now been granted to Terry Kennedy, who wants to assess his strategy, maybe change some of the plays. Right. Dean and Anthony one side, right? Liam and Brian the other. Go on, so the two. Brian, will you screen down for Liam and he pops out? Go high post. Isolate Liam, let him have the one I want. Go on, Brian, stop him out there, okay? You've got Max Day, you've got Anthony McHale, all right? Walk out and try to cheat. It's Collins, you've got to try to cheat a bit more on Collins. Okay. He's not going to hold the spell up. Wait, you for him. because he has the counter, the man behind him, and also the drumming of the kind of uh, 
Ballinas supporters. The Ballinas supporters are really getting into the game right now, but Jim Newton had a good time out. He's changing his defense so well. I think you might see Neptune speeding it up. Inside Sam Seamus Woods now takes over at the point. People will prepare to see him. Liam McHale with a very workmanlike and satisfied expression on his face just now. Tom O'Sullivan has another foul. Sullivan, this is very, very perilous now for the cup holders. Are they to relinquish their title here? One part of a double that they picked up last year, of course. Anthony McHale doesn't need to try and shoot three. He can afford to work it inside if he needs to. McStay going for three. Rebounded by Paul Kelly. Seamus Woods, the early ball. interfered with that ball as it was on its way down. It's called basket interference, so Tom is off the mark. Ooh. Shaping up to one another here. I think Tony Burke is going to have a word with those two players. He sees on the side now with uh, Sam Graham and Ewan Marsh. The elbows are flying in there, as I said earlier on, and I think it won't, it won't end there. I think the referees may have to tighten up here. This is that last piece of action. You see there Diora interfering as the ball was on its way down. Not allowed to do that. Liam McHale, good pass. In towards Brian Cutter. Brian Collins, I should say. Brian Sullivan holds on to it. Now, having got off the mark, and he finds this stolen touch. The only match the ball next day. They've been finishing most of the stack passes that have come from Neptune. And on this occasion, they've walked the ball to the court, and it's going to be possession for Ballina. In the last couple of moments, uh, Neptune have got more into their running style of play. They'll be happy with that. DJ Naylor is about to come back in as he will come into the match for the first time as Liam McHale bits to shoot. The first three pointer of the match, credited to Liam McHale, his tenth point of the game. 21 against 17. 20 points between them last year when he was missing. They so badly want to win this cup. They haven't won a major championship since they came to the four as a league side. They're top of the table at the moment. They have a big match here against Neptune next month. But this is the one they want to start with. Oh, Anthony McHale then has been fouled. He moves to the free throw line. Uh, Paul McStay is the player who comes off. And there's a change at point guard with DJ Naylor in there. Free throws for Anthony McHale. And that's a fact the team fouls now. Seven team fouls now on, on Neptune. Every shot after this, of course, will be the penalty situation for Batman. Every foul on that. You've got to be careful about how, who you foul. He's given one and one. He'll be able to give them away. 22 to 18. Five go, please. Nine minutes to go.
coming into the game. I think they're going to take out Anthony for a rest. Number 10, Sean McHale for Ballina. Well, I thought he was carrying a leg yesterday, and I better be careful about how I said. This time, I think I said something naughty yesterday. And since Tom O'Sullivan left the game, oh, no, no, switched to a 3-2 zone defense. DJ Naylor then carries it down court. Operating in there instead of Paul McStay at the moment. Giving the side a bit of variety. Yeah. Work for everything that comes his way against Seamus, Seamus Woods. 11 seconds on the shot clock now remaining. They have to get a shot in here inside 8 seconds. Are you here? The leader, Fiora Marsh, gets the shot in with the basket with 3 seconds to go. That was well worked. Good, sensible play. They slowed it down nicely. Thomas Sullivan is coming back into the game very shortly with 4 minutes and 45 seconds to go to half time. Not the highest scoring half we've had in a couple of years, but it's quite intense. Now, Brendan O'Flaherty on uh, DJ Nellis. Balance five, Brendan O'Flaherty. Scorer of uh, one three-point play so far. And substitutions are now being made. The realignment with DJ Naylor given a rest. Substitutions stay ready both to come back in. Tom O'Sullivan's back in as well, along with Graham, Colin O'Sullivan, Seamus Woods and Brendan O'Flaherty. And we have the three Mac Hales now on court, Paul Max Day, and of course Diora Marsh as well. And Tom O'Sullivan didn't get off to a good start in this match, but it's uh, very important now that Ballina keep the defense on him. Don't let him get his confidence up. Max Day. Well there. This is the spirit of this Neptune team. At the other end, 
he dispossessed Liam McHale. He tore down court. It was a hard work basket. So I think it's worth looking at again. Watch, it's still loose for McHale. Now, we see that Sean McHale really, really isn't 100% fit in the way he went back for that one. But the sheer effort and determination paid off. He was fouled, he gets the bonus, and he's put it away. It's three-point play. And again, they go into the full court press. McHale with uh, Paul McStay. McStay would have felt that uh, perhaps there was a personal contact foul there by Colin O'Sullivan. The referee didn't think so. I thought maybe McStay was lucky he was going where there was no space. Anthony McHale shooting three but failing to get it. So can McStay make it two instead? Remember, it's 28 against 32. Neptune have gone into a four point lead. Late in the first half, the match coming live now from the Neptune Stadium, and that's a beauty. Colin O'Sullivan with Diora Marsh sinking that one and picking up the bonus as well. It's two points. It was very, very near to being a three-pointer. And an interesting decision by the referee there. He's given the basket but uh, the foul was committed after the shot left Diora's hands, so he's also giving him a one-on-one. -on -one. It looked at one stage there if Neptune were coming into their rhythm, but uh, that score, I think, is a very important key one for Balana to keep them right in the hand. So if he makes this, this could be a four-point play for Balana. We talked about them being four points down. Now they've got their basket, and they've got their two-on-ones, and it's all level once again. 32 points each, four minutes, uh, about 46 seconds to go to half-time. We'll tell you about the stats a little bit later on. We'll keep that for the half-time break. Colin O'Sullivan. Brendan O'Flaherty, ooh, trying to make sure he doesn't go back into his own backboard. That would have given possession back to Balanar. Thomas Graham working his way through. Graham. Colin O'Sullivan. Wood's the one who set up that play initially. And flattened inside there is Dior Diora Marsh. And I think Graham can count himself lucky he didn't have another offensive foul there. I felt he went right into Marsh. Extremely lucky. Marsh still down, as you see. He really hit the deck like a sack of spuds that time. I think he may have hit his head off the back of the basket uh, stand there, Jar, because he doesn't look comfortable. And as you know, the rule in basketball is that the team officials should not go on the court, otherwise there'll be a timeout charge. This is what happened. They were watching Graham go in that time, and Polax, uh, Diora Marsh. Now, had Diora Marsh established position in there? He certainly had for my money, and Graham would seem to have had uh, the offensive foul, but the referee saw it otherwise. And Tony Golgan and Tony Burke are two of the best in the country. Here's Liam McHale. Out of the style of Liam McHale makes it 34 points each once more. And the scoring rate has certainly picked up after a really last five minutes in the beginning there when there was a fair amount to be an accurate shooting. Brendan O'Flaherty has made a difference, I think. He certainly has energised the team. He's anxious to stay in there in place of Stephen McCarthy, who is another option that they have. McCarthy, it often seems to me, is at his best when he's coming in off the bench rather than starting the game. But uh, with uh, limited options or less... Uh, Available options than last year, shall we say. He starts games this season. Anthony McHale in towards Liam McHale. Back to McStay. Pursued. Anthony McHale trying to go around Seamus Woods. Diora Marsh trying to tip it in there. And Liam McHale, who's as good as the American two. Well, one game doesn't decide who's the best native player at the moment, but the uh, competition is usually between McHale and Tom O'Sullivan. In this game, McHale is certainly asserting himself. And his points tally is 14. Brendan O'Brandy just uh, misunderstood the game with Seamus Woods, and we're inside two minutes of actual playing time in what's up. It's been a highly competitive, intense, sometimes edgy cup final, which had a lot of very good scores. And it's hard to believe at this stage that Tom O'Sullivan is still only on two points with less than two minutes to go to the Sean half. Sean McHale finding his brother Anthony. Anthony McHale. Your Marsh wanting to make himself loose, picking up his usual position, which is away on the left-hand side. Tom O'Sullivan. Tom O'Sullivan then on just those two points. Brendan O'Brandy to shoot three. 
So before half time, we can take a check on the Ballinar stats. And you see Liam McHale there on 14 points, nicely out of foul trouble as well. Supported by Diora Marsh, also on 14. on the offense, he feels his players are a little static, and I'd have to agree with him there. But I think we're going to see a rip roaring second half. The teams are very good to match my money. Paul McStay then nurses it in off the glass as Anthony McHale has slipped up at the other side, picks himself off the ground now. And into the zone position once again, they're going man to man indeed. Brendan O'Clarity, Seamus Woods. Oh, tipped away by Diora, but supported by Sam Graham. There was good support play there by Sam Graham. 36 plays 38. And the matchup that's causing trouble for Ballina is Anthony McHale trying to mark. Uh, Seamus Woods. Seamus Woods is very, very mobile and he's oh, taking the ball by Anthony McHale an awful lot of the time. So Anthony McHale then with 20 seconds to go to the half-time hooter. There's nine seconds on the shot clock, so a differential of about six seconds. Anthony McHale, possession then back with Neptune. Brendan O'Flaherty, seven seconds, six seconds to go to half-time. Comes back to Brendan O'Flaherty, second chance perhaps. 38 points against 38, evenly poised, the makings, as we were saying a little while ago, of a cracking good second half. So confirmation of the position then after the first half, Neptune 38 points, Balana 38 points. Well, who's going to win it? Will Neptune hold on to their cup? Will they win their fourth title in all, their cup win in all? Will Balana win their first? We haven't had a check yet on Balanaz, but once again, <laughs> Neptune there. Or we had rather, Neptune we haven't had a check on. It's Woods, 10 points. Uh, Graham on 10 points. Rather disappointing so far. Thomas Sullivan, one of their leading scorers all season, only on two points, and he's three personal fouls against him. So, it is very delicately poised. We're looking forward to a great second half. We'll be right back in the Neptune Stadium right after a break. See you soon. Eight points each at half time between Neptune and Balanar. The makings of a great second half, or at least the fingers are crossed. Now, last night, a major announcement was made by the IBBA that they are shortly to commence building on a new national stadium in Dublin. It's going to be one of the big undertakings for the association over the next 12 months, and I think it will boost basketball enormously in this country when finally it comes about. Tony Keane, president of the IBBA, it's been a long time coming, but it's a welcome development. It has indeed, Jared, and I'm very pleased to be able to confirm on television that we have got full planning permission for our new National Basketball Arena in Timon Park in Tallaght. It's a huge move for us, really. It's a huge move. And it's costing about £2.4 million. Pounds. It'll seat about 3,500 people. And we'll have three cross courts, one big playing court with the area. And it really is tremendous for us. We're hoping to get going shortly, probably, say, within three months, we will be in the ground. And the building schedule is for about 12 months. So, say, spring of 1992, we hope to be uh, putting on a big show up there. So I gather that the plans are that sometime in the spring of 1992, we will have perhaps a conference that is the top four clubs playing off at the end of the season. Well, because I suppose of the uncertainty of schedules, we obviously at this stage couldn't make any definite plans. But we would be very hopeful that we would have a major event, let's say, in the spring of 92 to celebrate the opening of our new National Basketball Arena. 
The game should certainly really take off in Dublin in a big, big way with such a facility available. Do you think it's one of the things that's been lacking in the past? Oh, very much so. A city of a million people, not to have a, a stadium that could, in fact, seat people. However, that's not to say we're forgetting that Cork is here and everything else because we've had very, very good development here in Cork and there could be a myth about that we're going to forget Cork when we get a new stadium in Dublin, but that's not true at all. Johnny Keane, thank you very much indeed. I know you've written the script, by the way, for this match, and you promised me it's going to be a good one. Second half's going to be good, isn't it? Very good. Good indeed. Tim, we have you back once again. What did you make of that first half? Very good game. I thought that Balna started very well, and Liam McKean in particular has had a particularly good first half. I think Neptune's worries will be that the mismatch by Thomas Sullivan and Diora caused him problems early on, and also Paul Kelly was a mismatch on Liam McHale. But they've rectified that with putting Sam Graham on Diora and Seamus Woods on Liam McHale. Good first half. Very even, and we'll go on with the wire. What about Liam McHale's performance? Well, I think Liam, as I said earlier in the week, he's su such a handful. He can play inside and outside. And when he had Paul Kelly on him, who's the same height, Liam is quicker, so he went inside a lot more. And then you see him in the end when Seamus Woods came out, he was shooting the ball well outside, and excellent, excellent first half. And I think a first half that justifies his talents. I thought Brendan O'Flaherty made a big difference when he came on. He was buzzing around there. Yeah, he gave him a bit of stability, really, that Steve McCarthy didn't in the first half. And he had a good three-pointer when he came in. He got an excellent steal and an excellent score, you know. And Brendan's a mature player. He's been around a while, and he's going to help him in the second half. What of Tom O'Sullivan, just two points? Yeah, disappointing for Tom. I think the problem he had was that with Dior in the first half, he tended to get into foul trouble early on. And also Liam McHale defensively did a good job on Tom. But Tom is a good player. As I said, he's second in the country to Liam, and I think he'll have a good second half. So what should we be looking out for now in the second half, Tim? Well, Neptune's strength in, in depth. Colin O'Sullivan, again, is going to play a key role. He came off the bench, had four very good points, and offensively rebounds very well for them. I think Ballinard's problem is that they're going to get in, into foul trouble. Brian Collins has a couple. Anthony McHale has a couple. And if they're to win, they've got to stay in the court. They've also got to isolate Liam Moore. They tend to get the ball to the wrong players at crucial times in the game. But Neptune just seemed to have that bit more going down the, str down the stretch. And I think that they'll just get it in the end, you know? There's a fair bench talent there in Neptune, isn't there? There is, really. They can bring somebody in who is equally as good as the guy on court, you know? And Ballina don't seem to have that. But the one in Neptune I would be concerned about is that their shooters, Tom and also Paul Kelly, are not hitting today, you know? which is due to the good defence of Balna, but also I think that they're rushing a few shots and, you know, in a cup situation, you've got to take your time. When you're a good player, the shots will come to you. Don't force them, you know. So I expect Neptune will look for big performances from Tom and Paul in the second half. Tim McCarty, thanks very much indeed. Tim, of course, who played in quite a few cup finals and was a star with demons in his time and an Irish captain as well. In his time, my goodness, he's only just after giving up the game. Well, let's take a check now on half-time with uh, Liam Hartigan and see what the stats are. We can see that team captain Seamus Woods is on 10 points. Stephen McCarthy hasn't scored at all. That's unusual. If you remember, he started in last year's final. Brendan O'Flaherty coming off the bench after a late injury where he has eight points. Sam Graham on 10. And then we have Paul Kelly on four points, Colin O'Sullivan four points, and Tom O'Sullivan just two points. And I think one of the features of the first half has been the defense of Liam McHale on Tom O'Sullivan. He's done a great job so far. Can he repeat it in the second yeah, half? Yeah. Now the foul yeah. yeah. statistics. Yeah. Captain Anthony McHale, just disappointing, just two points. He's also got two fouls. Then we have Paul McStay, four points. Brian Collins, four points. Diora Marsh, joint leading scorer on 14, along with Liam McHale, 14 points. 14 points. And there's a layer of expectancy down here on the court side. In a very tense atmosphere still, much tenser now than it was at the beginning of the game because both the teams obviously realised that it's within their own grasp, they're starting all over again. I feel that Balna could be suffering from the fact that they have Anthony McHale out on the left-hand side of the offence and Dior Marsh has been pushed outside as well by Sam Graham. And that to me is the reason they haven't got many more scores. Anthony McHale has thrown up a few, but they've really been long shots. And for a big guy like him, I think he's about 6'3", 6'4". Maybe he'd be better positioned, Liam, on the inside, posting up, giving Dior Marsh a bit of help inside. So an intriguing prospect for the second half, 38 points each. Two people have to be with us today. We'd love to be here, I know. Mary Bain, a former president of the IBBA, she's in St. Vincent's Nursing Hospital in, in Dublin. And uh, you are wished well by everybody, Mary, I can tell you. And uh, a founder of Balanar's Basketball Club, and a friend of Coley, who's in the Beaumont Hospital, get well to you as well. And while we're on 
greetings. Lena Kennedy, Jerry Kennedy's mother, it's her birthday it's today. Yes, second yes, second yes, yes, greetings. Yes, 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 in women's basketball earlier on, in case you missed our message, it was Blarney who won the cup, 86 against uh, 56. The Wildcats, and they're preparing big celebrations around 7 o'clock tonight, I know, down at Blarney, winning the cup back. very hot in this game, 16 points in all now, 14 for the first half. Seamus Woods. Is fouled by um, Paul McStay. It's going to be possession from the side of the court. Stephen McCarthy back in operating on the point again. Going to make the great impact that he made last year in the ICS Cup final. Seamus Woods. Ooh! An offensive foul, no question about it. I must say, Diora made the most of it. He did. But uh, he's done very, very well in terms of defense today. He's taken three charges now. And Ballina back in their triangle and two defense. They're conserving it with Thomas and Paul Kelly. The pace of this game is going to suit Ballina. We know that now because they like to get a slow game. It's only 40 points at 38. Normally these teams will be around the 50 mark by now. It could suit Ballina. He's in the aura pick up uh, the first no foul as well. That's his first of the game. Of course, and you're forced out of the action, but your Marsh has uh, a very disappointing to see him fall out of this game. So Paul Max stay there in this gripping cup final. Paul Max Day. available inside in the centre. Turn back to Anthony. Delightful pass. Now there's support in there from Liam McKay. Anthony winning it back. The backup play is excellent, and they're using their height and their strength as their great tenacity. Stephen McCarthy. Back on level terms. So Stephen McCarthy getting over the bar his first basket of the afternoon. It's a final which we hope you're enjoying. Max Day jumping from the three-point line, rebounded by Sam Graham. Stephen McCarthy and Neptune has uh, started the second half in his own defense and they're trying to force Paul McStay and Neptune to Woods as Neptune hit the front again. McStay towards Anthony McHale. Deora Marsh, tigerishly following. Deora, <laughs> 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 Deora, who's been averaging 30 points per game this season. Liam McHale there with his colleague, Brian Collins. And I thought the referee for a moment was going to blow for a jump ball. He was going to take that from him. But I think Liam McHale is really, really pumped up for this. He's very aggressive to the rebound. <laughs> and he's expert shooting. Six points is tally. Balana retake the lead. Well, if you want the cup final where it's lead changing every couple of minutes, this is it. Stephen McCarthy. Sam Graham. And I think Brian Collins will be far better off getting around because every time Graham gets it, he's going into the basket and causing foul trouble also. In along the baseline, Liam McHale, head into Diora. And Stephen McCarthy has uh, just picked up the first one. Well. That is his first. His team's second team foul for the half. And just a little dispute inside, Sam Graham being spoken to by the referee, by Tony Burke. Okay, just listen to me. I, I didn't see what happened at the start. I didn't see the whole thing. So, okay, just, just listen to me. I'm going to do nothing now. But the first time either one of you move out a step again, you'll go to the bench. That's it. Shake hands and let's get on with the game, Paul. Okay? Strong from Tony Burke there. 
Let me see it once more, and you're gone from the game, and I'm sure nobody wants to lose the position in the cup final, but he's going to have to clean it up. It's tough under the boards. People don't think we uh, have fair set up in basketball, but it does happen. Anthony McPhill. Paul Kelly then and Leo Lamarche really getting acquainted inside in the centre. Kelly, fingertips it away, over the floor. It's the last to touch it because it's possession back with Neptune. 44 points each. Early stage in the second half. Nugent then, ready. It's Anthony McHale. Jumping, shooting two. Comes down to Kevin Sullivan. Stephen McHale. Stolen away from him by Paul Day. Tony Coleman there. Sullivan, this is the player they really need to hit a really consistent scoring streak now. Paul Kelly. Dior Marsh. Thomas Sullivan. Hasn't been trying too many three-pointers so far. That's inside to Seamus Woods. They grapple for it. Comes out to Paul Kelly. It's inside towards the Earl Marsh, won't sink for him, that ball's in the end of the zone. Stephen McCarthy, Thomas Sullivan, in the run. And it's an offensive foul from the Earl Marsh, has established the position, and Thomas Sullivan has gone further and further. He's had a few personal fouls, and the ball is out of the game. And it was a great call by the referee, Tony, for no doubt about it, the Earl Marsh had position, beat set. It's not a popular decision, though. His feet firmly on the ground. But it gives Tom Wilkinson the opportunity to come in. Tom O'Sullivan obviously disgusted. Tom has got great position, but we see Wilkinson joining the fray. He'll be a good shooter from the outside from Neptune as well. But he knows that he's just not the score he is in the second half. He's very hard to get baskets. The defences are dominant. The defences are dominant. And really, the if the game opens up, it will go for Neptune. But if it stays tight, I think Ballina might win their first cup. Well, that's a long way to go, 40 minutes and 32 seconds. Dior Marsh on 16 points for the game. The court has just been wiped, so moisture getting onto the surface. Very dangerous for the players. As we see, Tom Wilkinson is in the action. Tom, a holder of seven league medals, six of them for Neptune, one with the great rivals, Blue Demons, as well as three cup medals as well. Number eight there, in the centre, on the back hill. Liam McHale there again. Yeah, it's looking really nice for Ballinar. Such is the dominance of Liam McHale in the game. Ahead by two points. And you wouldn't dare write off the chances of Neptune at this stage. There's so much time to go, and there's so little between them. Only two points. Well, now I really need a big game for both Liam McHale and uh, Diora Marsh because Anthony is struggling at the moment. Liam is looking really lively. There's Anthony into Diora. Diora is some tall people like Wilkinson, Kelly, and Graham that time. Liam McHale staying out around the perimeter. Max Day trying to work his way into a channel. Anthony McHale. Diora Marsh taking it with one hand, commandingly so. Anthony McHale not expecting the pass. Max Day was. McHale. Max Day jumping. The glass is pushing the effect of the shot. And that's the way he normally hits them. And the timeout has been called by Jim Nugent, who's unhappy because his side have now gone into a four point deficit position. Come on, come on.
I saw Jackie Solon look up at the rafters here where we see the Neptune pennants of the various uh, Cup and League championships that they've won throughout the years. And can this be another one? They're four points behind. So Jackie looked at the sad as he gazed up there. Is there a gap for 1991's Cup pennant? It's full time. Tom Wilkinson here. It's tied behind by four points. 13 minutes still to go. That's actual playing time. And will that last time out, I wonder, have an effect? Can the suck in? Can they devise some plan to get the better of Ballina? Well, after that timeout, Ballina have switched defences again. They're now in a 3-2 zone defence. They're going to force Neptune to shoot from the outside. They haven't really had great luck from the outside so far. Remember, their best shooter, Thomas Sullivan, now on the bench. Well, Lee McHale. Match day. By Stephen McCarthy, if you're a an edge, a sharpness which they've got, and Neptune are lacking. They're trailing by six. And Jim Nugent got on Paul Kelly that time, not for the shot because he didn't knock out the first attempt. Tom Wilkinson was a little out of luck with his shooting. So it's cut back to a four-point game once again. Ballard on the white four. Four points. So who's your money on? Trying to give us a hint that it might be Ballard's cup. That would be a first. Change coming up here on the court side. Colin O'Sullivan getting ready for the play. I think he'll go in instead of Paul Kelly. Seamus Woods, Liam McHale is going to go jump down with Tom Wilkinson. Woods protesting the Danny Cogan there and watching Colin O'Sullivan coming back into the action again. Well, it's actually Stephen McCarthy who goes out and it'll be interesting to see who takes up the point guard position because they don't have a recognised guard on the court. Tom Wilkinson is going to bring the ball, I'd imagine, or it might be Seamus Woods. A delicate enough decision by Jim Nugent, a risky one. It may come off for him. Well, let's see how the risk Woods. works out. Seamus Woods picking out Sam Graham. He must be. There are four points between the team. That's the chairman of the club, Jackie Solon there. Tom O'Sullivan there in the background on the bench at the moment, but in foul trouble on four fouls. And Graham, the scorer of that last basket. Brian Collins now matching up in there with Sam Graham. Anthony McHale. Liam McHale moving along the end of the baseline there. It's picked up by Paul Kelly, Tom Wilkinson, and Seamus Woods is the one who's going to carry it down court, back into the point guard position again. Graham, trading passes with Seamus Woods. Wilkinson. The zonal defence then being applied by Ballina. Anthony McHale just trying to prevent the shot from coming in. The old son of the end was on the last couple of rounds. Seamus Woods, the top of the court, the stay. Giving away a few inches to Seamus Woods. Jim Nugent, full of intensity. There was a nervous tension about the Neptune Stadium about 10 minutes before 4 o'clock, before the teams got ready for this match. Everybody on Tender was expecting a great game. You may have seen higher scoring games, of course you have, but for sheer intensity, this is pretty hard to beat. Liam McHale, fouled. It's against uh, Tom Wilkinson. Liam McHale then, considering his thoughts on 18 points. Paul McStay. Anthony McHale, this is Liam. Leading outside to Paul McStay. Stop. And carry down the ball to Seamus Woods. Nine minutes and 57 seconds of actual playing time to go. So the destination of the cup then to be determined, it seems, inside the next 10 minutes. Unless, of course, the match goes into overtime. Liam McHale, Max Day here. A support from Dior on the far side. Feeding it inside. A lovely fit out late. And look at the ladies on the side now. Six points in the margin. Great assist play by Tom and Stay. Great vision to see the aura under the basket. We're going to see Tom 
Sullivan coming. Sorry, Jar, we're going to see Tom O'Sullivan coming back into the game very soon. I think they recognise that uh, they need some score power. Paul Kelly picks up the foul. That's his second personal foul. So Paul Kelly is rested. Brendan O'Flaherty comes back in. Tom O'Sullivan is back in. So now we have a regular point guard. Or a knowledge point guard, Brendan O'Flaherty to carry the ball down court. It's Colin O'Sullivan, Seamus Woods, Tom O'Sullivan, Sam Graham. Against Paul Day here, Hugh McHales, Brian Collins and Diora Marsh. And it's 48 against 54. Six points the difference. Are the team beaten and beaten badly last year? Yeah. Wounded in fact as a result of that. But they came back with ferocious determination, well wound up, anxious to atone for that defeat. They lost by 20 points in the cup final. They want to win it this year. Sam Graham, his first experience of the cup final. Seamus Woods, Tom O'Sullivan. And really the hope has got to be from Neptune's point of view that he gets in some outside shots that are on target. Seamus Woods will be happy with two. He's a great leap in the air by Liam McHale. He's having a marvellous match really exerting quite an influence on the game. Eight minutes and 23 seconds to go. No particular hurry, they can afford to waste up as much of the 30-second clock as they so wish. It's now down on 16 seconds. Anthony McHale, Diora Marsh. So it's Brendan O'Farty then who picks it up on the rebound. Eight minutes remaining. So six points the difference, and Balana are in front. Brendan O'Farty trying to shoot three. Sam Graham, Paul Maxtay, and Paul Maxtay is fouled by Brendan O'Flaherty. Oh, and they're in to cool it down again, just temper spilling over a little bit. Tony Burke appreciates that there is great tension about. Stakes are high, and the psychological edge here between the nation's top two basketball teams at the moment, they're one and two in the league. And of course, we won't be reminding if you're a basketball aficionado that Neptune won both League and Cup last season, and Balana are poised perhaps to take the lead. A fine shot, extending the lead down to 56-48. 20 points is tally. Diora Marsh on 22. Graham is uh, Neptune's top scorer on 16 points, and a disappointing Tom O'Sullivan still on only two. Anthony McHale picks up the personal foul and he's on three fouls now. Seamus Woods by Brian Collins under his own basket. Paul McStay against the press supplied there from Brendan O'Brahardy. Time remaining. Diora Marsh. It's looking really good for the team from the West. Are they on their way to winning their first major national championship, the ICS Cup? Tom O'Sullivan shooting one, and it's wrestled in under there. It's going to be a jump ball between Seamus Woods and Brian Collins. And Tom Sullivan apologising to his team there. He knows he's not on form, but remember, he's the guy. He could do nine points in the, as many seconds, and he's done it before. I don't. I wouldn't rule out Tom Sullivan for a couple of three-pointers yet in this game. Yes, anything's possible. Great vocal support. Neptune, as you would expect, but a huge cheer when they were introduced to the crowd before the start of the match. But the deafening ovation that greeted Balaná left a lot of people wondering had a lot of Balaná people come down and managed to get tickets because tickets were next to impossible to get or were there some people perhaps who would like around these parts to see some other team other than Neptune win for a change This is O'Sullivan Now can he get both right against Liam McHale Needs support Brendan O'Flaherty to regroup and restart Sam Graham Tom O'Sullivan Again, McHale there. And McHale with great defensive play. Oh, he's really wound up. There's so much electricity about his play right now, and Tom O'Sullivan looks crestfallen. McHale. 
Anthony McHale. Well, it's been a game full of exciting patches. We've been able to go in and see the expressions on faces. We've been able to hear the coaches, the referees as well. A little bit of controversy maybe along the way. And great intensity, as we say. Jim Nugent on his feet. Very rarely sits down throughout a match. Brian Collins. Finding it inside. Anthony McHale. There are five seconds left on the shot clock, so they got to get a shot in here. You'll hear the Hooter. There's the Hooter. Possession back with Neptune. They play away, but it's going to be possession back with Neptune. I know there's a lot of noise about, but there's no way they can make a mistake that sound. So Neptune have foiled them for that particular offensive movement. But Galena have opened up a 10-point gap. There are only five minutes and 44 seconds to go. Is it still possible for the Reds? Well, Collins simply must get around Sam Graham there. He's handled all Graham. Such easy access to the ball. And that's a foul picked up by Anthony McHale, his fourth personal foul. So perilously close to being fouled out. Terry Kennedy decides to leave him on. Colin Arthur brings in goals in round one. Send Declan's in the quarterfinal. Kilester yesterday, today against Neptune. Are they on their way to glory? And there's plenty of time remaining in this ball game if they're good enough. So this is one man they have to subdue. Liam McHale fouled. There's perhaps a lack of uh, confidence on uh, the goal part of coach Terry Kennedy on his bench because with uh, so much time left, Anthony McHale has four fouls. Surely the move would be to bring him to the side for a minute or so and just protect that last vital final foul. Anthony McHale receiving it back. Liam wanting it again. Well, you know a player when he's in form, he wants to be on the ball, he wants to have possession because then he can make the game turn for his team. Here he is receiving this. 22 points. Man of the match. Well, that will be determined shortly. MVP, they call it in basketball. Ballina are showing great poise here, taking their time when they have the lead. They have the winning the ball. Brian Collins, the tall six foot seven inch centre from Dublin, who travels to Ballina for training every week. Very much part of this squad and playing a key role. Ten points the difference again. 4-18. Colin O'Sullivan trying to draw the foul. Successfully does so, and it's uh, Brian Collins, the arm raise, signaling that he's the one who has picked up the foul, and that is his third. Ballina now on 15 fouls for the second half. I'd expect to see Neptune come out on a full court pass, possibly after these creatures, and possibly to start stopping the clock. And again, to explain, the clock is the enemy of Neptune at this stage. Uh, when I say stop the clock, I mean foul. It's not as cynical as it sounds. I think Balanau will expect to be fouled at this stage of the game. And uh, you'll see Paul Kelly come into the game, replacing Colin O'Sullivan, if there's a successful shot here. And that means the game is going to be speeded up because Colin is a slow player, an inside player. Paul Kelly is on the outside, and he'll be going for the three-point pop. So it's Colin oh, O'Sullivan is going to shoot two from the free throw line to try and eat into the ten-point lead that Balanau has established. Followers, supporters all around the Pack Nectar Stadium making a terrific din. You have heard them, I'm sure, singing in the background, chanting for their team, giving them great support. And he's missing all the fans So Jim Nugent, I think, a look of resignation on his face at this stage. He realised, I'm sure, from early in the second half that he was in some trouble. Trying to subdue this fellow was one of the major difficulties. Diora Marsh, the other. The clock ticks down inside four minutes, and Dior is leading it up again. Balanar surely are on their way to glory. Going, and they're flurried up by Neptune. They need those three-pointers. Seamus Woods 
will hope to pick up two and Collins has picked up a foul and Seamus Woods goes to the free throw line and action on the court side Jim oh, Nugent demanding a timeout he's got one chance 343 in the game and the gap is 12 and not the worst foul because at least he didn't give him the basket plus one that would be a cardinal sin at this stage he's making him get those two free throws and make them under this pressure the cover of press and he takes it in near the ball to pick so now then will you get the ball inside for 10 10 and go to the basket full court man to man full court you got to push the last two nine in the ball two nine in the ball you got to get up you got the aura if you get done you got Colin and you got Anthony full court every score you got the two two four no you got the two hey nobody relaxing right let's put the wind this way hey go hey Sure, sure. The difference between us and Kilester yesterday was the last three minutes and we were pushing up. for a full no, press no, in, no, the, in no. the Pep June bench. Jim Newton, as you predicted, Liam, pushing for a big full press. The scene in just the face of the crowd here. Pano Marta, Kalani and Kerry viewers will re remember Tom Marta playing for Kalani. Three, 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 three. He's in the crowd, believe it or not, supporting Ballina. So I wonder who he thinks is going to win this. Well, at this stage, he knows all about pressure. I've been used to it in Gaelic football circles, of course, down the years. effectively trying to uh, make it a two-point score but the ball had gone out of bounds Red so put back in here to Ian McLean who's operating now on the point Paul Kelly Seamus Woods and the foul there by Diora Diora Marsh's second foul on the ball one at the start of the half and now one with three minutes and 35 seconds to go and Val and I have to be careful because Nugent got another effort on the basket there in just about 10 Shem seconds. We must refrain from fouling because every time the whistle blows, the clock stops. And the clock is Nugent's biggest enemy at this stage. success to date this will put 12 points between the teams and only 20 only three minutes and 20 seconds remaining by Paul Kelly. Brian Collins wouldn't necessarily be the best free shooter on the team. I'm not going to criticise him. He'd probably sink the two of them. But Paul Kelly had to get the ball back from Ballina. They were going into a stalled offence. And now they go. The opportunity is there for Neptune maybe to get the three goals. Well, basketball, I think people outside of Cork would probably benefit by a Ballina victory here. Yes, but more importantly, he missed out the clock. So we come down to the other end of the floor with no time off the clock for another one and one. 
the Valinas, Abdi Mikhail fouled out and Sean Mikhail coming in to take his place and share in what looks like being a celebratory afternoon Liam Mikhail has made so much of it happen the architect of much of their success on 22 points at the free throw line it's Paul Kelly expertly dispatched the first time so his second free throw and Ballinam must look to get the ball possibly to Diora or to Liam Mikhail who are very good free throw shooters well, that should have come up against a very very determined Ballinam side this afternoon possession for Neptune not prepared to give up yet time out has been called out by Terry Kennedy of Ballinam wants to make sure that the lead doesn't slip away from his team at a critical time in the match. Look, they shed us being it. Right? 11 down, we have possession. We want to score over this possession. Full court pressure, right? Paul Collins put him to the line. It's just a second stick in the way. We want to fall next game against the ball. We want to put him on the line. We don't want to lead them on the car and score. Okay? Paul Collins, that's what we're going for. Push it. Terry Kennedy had quite a, a reasonable time out there in terms of intensity. He just said, get the ball to the shooters and let's finish them off. He's quite confident they're going to win it. I don't know if it's that confident, if you're that confident there's two minutes and 53 seconds and this Neptune team haven't started playing yet. Winners of so much success in the 1980s, Neptune. Oh. One and one the outcome, and it's going to be Tom O'Sullivan to the free throw line. Again, another silly foul by Ballina. They don't want to stop the clock, whereas Neptune do at every opportunity. be down to single figures and he manages to put this away and then three three pointers between the teams so it's still possible but it'll be the biggest miracle since Lazarus came back I think watch for a foul they come out to win it in the last minute or so occurred the game has swung Neptune's way I think that the uh, Another timeout is probably needed by Terry Kennedy. If he's got one left, he should use it. Brendan O'Flaherty. Paul Kelly feeding it inside to Sam Graham. Oh, McLean was just waiting. He should have gone and moved for that one. Instead, it's Mark Hale who was so alert. Theora Marsh with great speed. And a lovely finish. Is that the winning combination? Marsh, 2.20 to go. Ian McLean. Cautious and careful of the travel. Seamus Woods. And that's Tom O'Sullivan making life just a little bit difficult for Liam McHale. So Tom O'Sullivan has given it away to Liam McHale. Nothing has gone right for him. He's a very good player, but this just hasn't been his game. Paul McStay pointing to Ura Marsh. Sean McHale taking the forward now to let that ball swing around where we do what they did yesterday, which is play the four corners of the ball. And it's given away by Paul Kelly, who's lost it. But there's a foul. The referee saw the foul by Paul McStay, his third. Paul McStay has been in action with Mayo. John O'Mahony, I know, would like to have him in his uh, Gaelic football team as well. I suppose Liam McHale also. Well, is this an indication of things to come in 1991? Will it be Mayo's year? Please. Uh, Flaherty getting in the game for Neptune. He'll be speeding it up. He's a fast player and he'll be looking for the outside shot as well. So this game isn't over yet. So, the next piece of action is from the free throw line. It's all very shooting one. Hoping to pick up the bonus, it's one and one. And he sinks it. And there are ten between the one score. 
But the clock now very much the enemy of Neptune. The cup holders, are they about to lose one of the crowns they picked up from last year? Well, if Ballina win, it'll certainly be in large measure to the defensive job that Lee Nicole did on Tom O'Sullivan. The last competition of the season, of course, is the top four championship. Ballina at this stage are excluded from it because of a controversy last year. That's an event which will be happening here in March, and we look forward to bringing you the action from that when it happens. But it would be disappointing if Ballina were not to be part of the action. That's Liam McDowell, that's Seamus Woods, and Tony Colgan comes across. Clenched fist, two fingers, which means 12 in all, the number being worn by Seamus Woods. Reported for foul, his third. We're now just over a minute of actual, a minute and a half of actual playing time remaining. And Liam McHale there, hoping to carry out his coach's instructions and finish off the job. <laughs> 23 points now for Liam McHale, a magnificent 30 for Diora Marsh. Brendan O'Flaherty out of luck. Comes back to Tom O'Sullivan. Just needing a bit of leeway. Fresh shot. Oh, the performance there. Now this is clever. He doesn't need to shoot. He can afford to get the clock to the ground. We saw Tom O'Sullivan trying to foul there. He's trying to stop that clock. It's gone out of court. It's possession back with Neptune. Lomas making his way back under his boards. McHale. With the broad smile on the face, then the wink to a colleague saying, Yeah, I think we're on our way. This looks like our day at last. don't have too much of a voice left after a match like this. I know how hard it is to try and make your voice heard down there on court when they're screaming into your ear. <laughs> Terry Kennedy then and his team of coaches would seem to have worked the oracle. And Sam Graham replies for Neptune, keeping them just nine points adrift. Oh, 55 oh, seconds oh, to go. Max Stay has been fouled. It's one and one. Tom O'Sullivan. which will make a big difference, not just a one-on-one, -on -one, I think. Well, Liam McHale wanted to say it was an intentional foul, but I don't think it's... <laughs> the... Oh, well, I saw Tony Burke signal an intentional iPad. But uh, Tony Carlton's had his way, and it's a one-on-one -on -one foul given. Well, without a doubt, I was close to the action, and it was a, an intentional foul called by Tony Park. For some reason, he's changed his mind. So they sing, you'll never walk alone, in many parts of the West. A big day for Ballon oh, It shows that when you get a hammering one points, you can come back. There is life after defeat in the cup final. I think possibly Tom O'Sullivan's had his answer from the question he was asking before the game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's had a great game. Up on 10 points. Dura Marsh 30. McHale 24. We look at the stats. Yeah. Yeah. Inside the last 44 seconds. And they can finish off the job now for the Kenny Possession and it's a foul which has been picked up there by Gordon Fitzgerald. Well, one has looked inevitable now since early stages in the second half is now about to become a reality. Long March. I don't know what his Christian name is, but his mother, Sam 
Graham looking on, despondently. I've just discovered his name is Lamar now, so I'm a proud man of the game who sees this on videotape in the future. Well, let's give credit where credit is due. This has been a terrific display by Ballina Basketball Club. It gives hope for the Ballina Basketball Club in many corners of Ireland. And Diora Marsh there, a star. Liam McHale, another, 74-61. In the dying embers of the ICS Cup final, 27 seconds to go. And again, Paul McStay wants to hold it up, but the clock ticked down. They don't even have to get a shot on here now. The foul, in any case, comes in just to try and make sure they don't get it all the wrong way, Brendan O'Brien. Basketball is going to benefit, and of course, at underage level, Liam, basketball is very strong. Maybe I could take this opportunity, indeed, to congratulate the Irish boys who beat England 71-60 on Friday night in Castle Bar. Great display, congratulations to the boys, and indeed to the coaches, Larry O'Reilly and Jimmy Clark. And there are a lot of people being thanked down here, Jer, particularly Gina Carney, who helped out with Sean McHale's leg. I believe she's the wife of Martin Carney, the Mayo footballer. So the whole of Mayo got involved in this victory. Yeah, plenty of uh, well-known faces around the place. I saw Anthony Finnerty here yesterday, who remembered, of course, scoring a goal against Paul in the uh, final two years ago. by 77 points to 61. It's been a pulsating display of basketball by Anthony McHale and his team. Coach Terry Kennedy really did his job. The fans come on to cheer a stirring performance, one of the best they've ever given. Terry Kennedy raised shoulder high, and as you see, Diora Marsh emerged as top scorer on 30 points. Liam McHale, a telling contribution of 24. And Paul McStay, look at that, the point guard getting 13 this afternoon. So they celebrate here with Diora Marsh and Anthony McHale. This is Neptune. It was a disappointing afternoon for them. Their American Sam Graham kept them in touch with 20 points. Seamus Woods, the captain, played a captain's role on 14. But overall, several players were off colour on the day. A tribute, really, to the great display of Ballina and Terry Kennedy enjoying his moment of glory. Now, the question we have to ask very shortly is, is this the first part of a double? I just wonder. They meet Neptune here again next month. I think it's on the 17th of February. Not so sure about that date. And that will be a game which may well determine how the league is going to go. But there's been such a dominance by Cork clubs down the years of the league. I wonder, is it to go from Cork or from Munster this year? Will it be going west? The cup has already gone west. Ballina are the cup winners. We'll see the celebrations, we'll see the presentations right after this commercial break. See you soon. Thank you. 
for Neptune, the cup goes to Ballina. The fans have screamed out here onto the court, they're trying to make a little channel now so that the players can go up and receive their winners and runners-up trophies. From Tony O'Connell of the ICS and to Tony Keane of the IBBA, the president. In the Irish the 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 there, the chief executive of the IBBA, who's organised and masterminded a fine operation once again with Patrick Coffey, Claudio O'Connell there, and Tony Keane then commiserating with team captain of Neptune, Seamus Woods. So they pick up their runners up trophies to begin with. Sam Graham there, congratulated and commiserated at the same time. He played well, but it wasn't to be for his team. Ian McLean there, Colin O'Sullivan going through. Stephen McCarthy who had such a great tournament last year, the MVP in the final, a little disappointed this afternoon, I know, but there's still the league to play for, and uh, it's going to make for a gripping finale, and, of course, the top four championship, which will also be down here in Cork in the Neptune Stadium. Jim Nugent, the coach this afternoon, making his way down. Tom Wilkinson, he's been up there receiving the cup many times in the past. Three times in all, they won the cup, but Ballina have picked up their very first trophy. And so, making his way through the crowd is Anthony McHale. And the crowd then ready to salute and give the champions. The cup is ready. Tony O'Connell of the ICS Building Society is ready to hand it over to the deserved winners. Anthony McHale, this must be the proudest moment in his basketballing career. He's led Little Ballina to the ICS Cup victory. It's going west. Ballina are the victors. They will celebrate tonight, I'm sure. Well, I'm not too sure if they'll be on their way west tonight or whether it'll be tomorrow. But they'll be celebrating for some time, and deservedly so. Sean McHale coming along just after him there. for the McHale family, they're all steeped in basketball. And I just wonder now whether or not it's going to be part of a double. That psychological edge which they will now have over Neptune may be very important. They also have a, a points tally advantage over the defending league champions at the moment as well. It's about six turns of games to go. showed his places this afternoon when it was really needed. Kept them very much in the match last year when they were well beaten but this afternoon is part of a winning combination. And with life and little baby child down there, he's able to enjoy it. And there is Liam Mandel. I just wonder whether he is the one who will win the MVP, the most valuable player of the final. It was one of the senior women's by Marla Moffat of Brownie. The under-19 women's team MVP was Yvonne Walsh. In the men's under-19 team, it was Vincent Murphy of Kim Turk. They had a great victory and a big crowd here present to witness that. And then the under-19 women's A won by Helen O'Keefe of Wildcats, while Paul Mitchell of Malahide is a name to be reckoned with. I thought he was a very, very impressive performer in yesterday's under-19 men's A final. We've seen a lot of basketball this weekend. A lot of it very, very good. And, of course, over the weekend as well in England, in Plymouth, the girls under 15 had a fine victory over England, beating them by 60 points to 54 with Roger Keller and Pat Collins, their coaches. Terry Kennedy, the happiest moment, I'm sure, in his basketballing career, sharing the victory podium now with Anthony McHale. Lots and lots of photographs to be taken. It's not just the senior stars, but we've got lots of people coming along, starting with the under-19, well, they're going to run through some of the others that I've already given for you. So we're going to tell you that shortly. But um, right now, let's have a look at the women's final. Part of the action there involving Blarney and Wildcats. The early stages coming up. Michelle Maguire firing one in. Rose Breen covers so much of the court. Elaine Hurley. Well intercepted. Joanne Keating. Joanne Keating has Mary Fitzpatrick to assist her if she so requires. Susan Devereaux. Devereaux. Lobs it up, Mary Fitzpatrick taking it in her stride, confidently dispatching it. The Irish international then, married to Jerry Fitzpatrick, 
adds to her score. But at the other end, it's Marla Muffin. They're going basket for basket in the second half. 78 against 50, 55. Very high returns for both teams. And Gillian Hayes is going to come into the game here for Wildcats. A very impressive last five minutes of basketball. I think the basketball level has really come up trumps in the second half here. Absolutely. Caroline Ford. Jumping, sinking it. The pace is so fast right now. Wildcats not giving up. Very gamely performing. And at the moment, the top scorer for Wildcats is Mary Fitzpatrick, who's normally seen as a defensive specialist. She's having a great game in offense. Susan Devereaux, Susan Devereaux targeting yeah. that one as a three-point. Marla yeah. Moffat says, hang on, wasn't I being held in there by Michelle, by Martina Curry? But Damien Egan was well positioned. Didn't think so. Tracy Nagel with Caroline Ford to a sister. Inside to Marla Moffat, magnificently in. But the referee says, no, no. It was an offensive foul. And she's on four personal fouls now, Marla Moppen. In a more precarious situation, there would be real concern. Vicky Vaughan has a quick word with her, probably saying, take it easy. Number four, Gail Doyle going into the game for her first taste of the action for Wildcats. And she'll go in in the guard position, helping out Susan Devereaux, I imagine. Susan Devereaux. Eighty against fifty-five. Travel there by Sue Devereaux. Sandy Fitzgibbon put a lot of pressure on, caused her to travel. Gail Doyle then, back in the guard position against Dana O'Leary. Or oh, Caroline Ford is prepared to sink a three-pointer. Oh, they're going in like missiles, and they're delighted. Dummy and Vicky. Well, she may be an American, but she did a little bit of a clear jig there when that three-pointer went down. An overhead ball by Susan Devereaux. Complaints in there that it might have been a blarney finger that touched that one. Susan Devereaux, I think, thought so. And if you remember last year, Caroline, perform Caroline Ford's performance in the final wasn't up to par, really. You know, she is a star player, but really didn't perform as well as she might have last year, and she's making up for it now. I think she certainly has a tone for it. She started very determined, very positively. <laughs> and so... Sandy Fitzgibbon moves to the free throw line. Number four. That is Gail Doyle, who has picked up her first personal first foul, foul just in off the bench. Four. And Sandy Fitzgibbon's figures Sandy four, Fitzgibbon. four, four, four two points four. in all, two fouls. <laughs> this is the first of her two free throws. Marla Moppen, the top scorer, on 27 points. Caroline Ford on 20. Rose Breen on 14. Sandy Fitzgibbon on 5. Five. 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 So we're inside the last uh, two, four, two and a half minutes or so. 84 to 55. Gillian Hayes trying one from way outside. Caroline Three, Ford takes it down five, with some ease. And runs that full Three, fourth five, drive five, in towards Marla Moppen. Stopped. Fouled. giving her a set.